an elimination reaction is essentially the opposite of an addition reaction. In an addition reaction, two molecules are combined without any side products being formed. This requires a multiple bond where the incoming atoms can add, so addition reactions are commonly observed in alkenes. In an elimination reaction, atoms are removed from a molecule to form multiple products, one of which being the molecule with the multiple bond, and hence alkenes are commonly formed from elimination reactions. There are two main mechanisms for an elimination reaction, E1 and E2. Just like the SN1 and SN2 mechanisms, the numbers here represent the number of reactants involved in the rate-determining step. Elimination reactions also involve similar reactants to nucleophilic substitution reactions, but they proceed in different ways. The reaction between a halogenoalkane and a hydroxide ion either lead to the formation of the alcohol via nucleophilic substitution, or it can lead to the formation of the alkene via elimination. Check out my nucleophilic substitution video if you'd like a refresher on the two main nucleophilic substitution mechanisms. SN1 and SN2. Let's go through how each of the elimination mechanisms work. We'll start with E1. In an E1 reaction, there is only one reactant involved in the rate determining step, the halogenoalkane. The bond between the carbon and the leaving group, in this case the halogen, spontaneously breaks, causing a halide ion to leave the molecule. This is a slow process, but after it happens, there are two possibilities for what occurs next. The first option is that the hydroxide acts as a nucleophile and can move in to form a bond with the carbocation, resulting in an alcohol. This would be a nucleophilic substitution reaction, specifically SN1. The second option is that the hydroxide acts as a base and removes a hydrogen from the carbon adjacent to the carbon with the positive charge. This causes the electrons in the carbon-hydrogen bond to swing around and form a new carbon-carbon pi bond resulting in an alkene. This is an elimination reaction as atoms have been eliminated from the original halogenoalkane. In reality, E1 and SN1 usually occur side by side, giving you a mixture of products. In an E2 mechanism, there are two reactants involved in the rate determining step. If the hydroxide behaves as a nucleophile, it forms a bond with the delta plus carbon atom, which kicks out a halide ion. This would be the other type of nucleophilic substitution, SN2. However, if the hydroxide behaves as a base, it will remove a hydrogen from the carbon adjacent to the carbon which is bonded to the halogen. Just like in the E1 mechanism, this causes the electrons in the carbon-hydrogen bond to swing around and form a new carbon-carbon pi bond, which subsequently forces the electrons in the carbon-halogen bond to move all the way onto the halogen, kicking out a halide ion. So, when the hydroxide acts as a nucleophile, we get nucleophilic substitution. And when the hydroxide acts as a base, we get elimination. So the question is, when would you expect nucleophilic substitution to occur? And when would you expect elimination to occur? The most obvious factor that affects this is how strong of a base the nucleophile is. Nucleophiles that are strong bases will tend to behave more like a base, and hence will usually favour elimination over substitution. If the nucleophile is a weaker base but behaves as a strong nucleophile, meaning it strongly donates a pair of electrons, substitution will be favoured instead. The second factor is how bulky the nucleophile is. A bulkier nucleophile will find it harder to access the delta plus carbon in order to initiate a substitution reaction. Instead, it'll be much easier for it to remove an adjacent proton, which is more exposed. So, a bulkier nucleophile favours elimination. Specifically, E2. The final factor is the temperature. 
The reasoning behind this is due to the thermodynamics of the reactions, which I can go into more in another video. For now, just be aware that elimination is favoured at higher temperatures. The next question is, if we are getting elimination, when would you expect E1 to occur, and when would you expect E2 to occur? Let's start with E1. Similar to an SN1 reaction, the biggest barrier for an E1 reaction is the formation of the carbocation. Remember, alkyl groups are electron donating, meaning they'll push electrons towards the positively charged carbon atom. The more alkyl groups there are, the more electrons are being pushed, and therefore the more the positive charge is stabilised. So, primary carbocations are the least stable, followed by secondary carbocations, and then tertiary carbocations are the most stable. This means that a tertiary halogenoalkane is more likely to undergo E1 in comparison to a primary halogenoalkane, due to the relative stability of the carbocation intermediates that will form. For E2, the way to predict whether this mechanism will occur is the strength of the base. A stronger base tends to favour E2 elimination. The other factor to consider is the solvent. Polar protic solvents can form hydrogen bonds and are better at stabilising carbocations. So using a polar protic solvent such as ethanol tends to favour E1. Polar aprotic solvents do not form hydrogen bonds, so they do not stabilise carbocations as well and hence they tend to favour E2. So bringing this all together, reacting a tertiary halogenoalkane with a weak base using an ethanolic solvent will favour both E1 and SN1, as they tend to occur side by side. However, the more ethanol you use in your solvent in comparison to water, the more the elimination will be favoured. The more water you use in comparison to the ethanol, the more the substitution will be favoured. Reacting a primary halogenoalkane with a strong base in acetone will tend to favour E2. On top of this, using an even bulkier base at higher temperatures will help to favour elimination reactions over substitution reactions. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to support the channel and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.